in the mood of the president's uh, address, independence address. But here we are. We thank God for life, and um, we also thank God for hope. Uh, we got assurances that um, work is going on right round the clock, and even though it might still seem as if we are uh, challenged um, so very, very, uh, in, a, so in such a difficult way, uh, but that for all of this, as we heard the president express yesterday, uh, better days are to come. The president had appealed for patience. Now, let's continue on that stream and um, looking at various aspects um, of the situation. Our guest this morning um, is a Niger Delta spokesperson, Chief Anabs Sara Igbe. He's the National Coordinator, South-South Elders Forum, and Pioneer Spokesman of PANDE, which is the Pan-Niger Delta Forum. A, a fine morning to you, uh, Chief Sara Igbe, and uh, dare I say, happy independence. Good morning. Yes. And um, when I, when I, when I, thank you for having me. always our pleasure. When I expressed it as uh, that, as a, dare I say, happy independence, I was relating to some subject matters that I know um, you have on your mind. For instance, um, you are sort of a very much, how do I put this now? You, you're sort of highly interested in the effect um, of you know, the situation that we're in, talking in particular about um, the removal of the subsidy on fuel and its effect, of course, all of Nigeria on the one hand, but then you have a notion that particularly in the Niger Delta uh, does bear uh, some sort of airing. Uh, am I right with that, Chief? Well, uh, you, are, you are very much right that... Uh with the people of Niger Delta in the earnest sense, more so as it relates to us. Yes. So we, we, the oil is produced from our backyard. Okay. We are suffering from the environmental degradation. We are being deprived of our political occupation of fishing and farming. And yet, the oil that we are producing, we are also paying the highest price. Besides, you're also stopping us from buying fuel in jelly can to our boats. We don't have car. Most of us don't have car. We use boat. And you're also stopping us from using jelly can to buy fuel. So what do you want us to do? Hmm. These are some of the issues I think we have to look at. And uh, our crack, we produce the oil. You don't want us to be empty. The NPDC which house we are house almost all the divested uh, asset, you refuse us to be empty. Instead of allowing Saltana to be empty, you brought in expatriate. Expatriate to run it when we have more than enough competent Nigerians there are, I don't, who can manage. I don't recall any expatriate the, like that in the NMPC. I am telling you now the MD of NMPDC is an expatriate. The MD of the retail is also an expatriate. Just to prevent the people from the Niger Delta or South Out or the South of Nigeria to, have to get to that position, okay. even though they are more than qualified. Mm. Okay. So, um, actually, when that you... That is the situation we find ourselves. Okay, when you speak about the national... When you speak about uh, NMPC, um, you, 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 you... Most Nigerians will remember Mele Kiari, uh you know, so I, I don't know what you meant when you said expertly. Well, uh, M M M L K is the group executive, uh, the director, the GMD. The group executive officer, or the president of the NNPC. Yes. NNPC have subsidiaries. Okay, okay. Other okay, companies okay. under okay, the NNPC. Okay, 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 okay. okay. And... Uh, Melekiari, who has spent over 35 years in service, contrary to Section 8, Article uh, 020810, which says compulsory retirement at the age of 60 or 35, whichever one that comes first, remains there and refused South Africa, particularly.
the Niger Deltans to occupy the position of MD of NPDC as well as uh, the NPC retail. And what we are talking about today is petrol, scarcity, cost. These are expatriates that he has brought in instead of bringing in Niger Deltans or South Adans who are competent to run the place. You know, this is not fair to us as the people of Niger Delta, and that is why we are here to discuss that by Lake Yari, we pray by on, on, uh, the January 8th, it will be 60 years. If you refuse to retire at uh, the five years in service, I think you should retire at 60 years so that a Niger Delta son or daughter who pass through the finance in the NPC should be the end of the NPC because the person will be able to understand the dynamics. We talk about oil theft, we talk about uh, uh, stealing pipeline vandalism, we talk about all these things that are affecting production. But that is not the issue. The issue is, are the oil being produced? Then you don't have enough oil reserve. We have gas, enough gas. The gas we have in Nigeria can take us for more than 100 years. We cannot finish it, okay. no matter how we sell it. Okay. Yet, I'm paying high premium on gas. You encourage us to go to gas. Gas is now nobody. Uh, you cannot buy gas. Gas, gas is over 1,200, 1,500 per liter. So these are the problems we have, KG. If we can pay gas that is abundantly in Nigeria that we are not uh, bothered to get, we are burning, we are flaring, and you cannot bring it to Nigerians at a cheaper rate, you take it up. You are looking for money. You are looking for money. Well, the carry came in when fuel was 145, and 150 per liter. Today, in the Niger Delta, we are buying fuel for 3,000 per liter. And yet, you don't want us to buy it with jerry can. The filling stations are not also there. This is retail. It's not giving us filling stations. You starve us. And you said we should buy 3,000 per liter. And people in Port Harcourt are buying 1,350 naira per liter. When it, you came in at the time, fuel was just 148. The fuel cost of fuel is now affecting the entire country. That cost of living is very high. Said okay, subsidy course. was the problem. You are paying subsidy. Who pays the subsidy? I said then PC okay. MD. Since you came in, you are the one, you are the sole importer of petroleum. You are the sole seller of petroleum. And yet you are talking about subsidy. Who takes the subsidy and where is the subsidy money? You have okay. selling our I, I, uh, I, I, oil, crude oil. In the past, the crude oil feeds the Federation account. For some months now, there is no money coming from the crude, crude oil sales. Federal government pays from the customs and taxes. What happens to all this money? Where are all this money going to? We, at the time you Kiari came to power, Warren Refinery was working very well. Portacol Refinery was working but athletic. And you said you want to do turn around maintenance. You would have done it one after the other. You just shut down. You want to do turn around maintenance. So they can have opportunity to be importing fuel. When you import fuel, you pay freight, you pay uh, uh, shipping charges, you pay uh, 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 customs, you will produce, you are bringing only the PMS and diesel, leaving the other byproducts for the country where you are producing it. You create job opportunity for people outside the country, leaving Nigeria as supposed to work. One refinery has engaged more than 20,000, 50,000 persons, direct Chief, and indirect staff. Chief but today, Sarah, the refineries are more bond. You want to oh. overhaul the refinery 2019 to today, five years, you cannot overhaul. My experience with the refineries in the past, they do it okay. section by section. I hear you. From um, one because refinery, they move to the other. They do it. They don't just shut down the plant at a go. They are sure, make sure that the refineries are working so that they can be selling. Today, we don't have petrol. We are importing. Dangote has come on stream. You are having a problem with Dangote so that you can import. These are the problems that worries us. The economy, we cannot buy food. We cannot do anything. Everything is bad. The NMPC is not as problem. I hear you. I hear you, Chief Sara Igwe. I and hear I you. you. Thank you very much. For the I, I, I let walk, you, sp you I, I let you speak at length. To have their powers. Okay. Uh, Chief Sara Igwe, I let you speak.
I let you speak the at length so that we could have get the entirety. The subsidiary I, I let you speak at length so that we could get the entirety of your um, complaint because that's what it is. Um, and indeed, yes. we just we did want to hear it. Uh, but, but surely, I don't know if if one were not careful, um, one could actually deduce from what you are saying that you you blame uh, an individual. Whereas, as you know, the NMPC will be working according to uh, national policy and in the best interests of the country. But I understand that, well, be that as it is, there are, there are some, maybe more than some, in the Niger Delta that will think that enough attention and enough, um, what, what is the word that they use now, sort of positive discrimination has not been applied to them. But the NMPC has been working uh, according, as we are told, according to an official plan, an official policy that's been approved by everybody. And it's not, it's not as if there are no South-South uh, uh, um, uh, professionals within the NMPC. It's just that I think you are making a case now for the very headship. So uh, do you appreciate that one might, from your submission, um, think that you're actually speaking about a particular individual being the problem uh, of the South-South within uh, the NMPC. Do, do you see that? Do you see how that is? Well, NMPC used to operate as a body, as a corporate body that has policies. We had various committees, like in the, in the subsidiaries. You have what to call the tender committee, after the tender committee, we have what we call uh, BESCOM, that's management committee. If the project is within that limit, if the procurement is within the limit of uh, the management of management committee, which happened to be $2 million, they will approve, they go ahead to procure and do the job without any reference to anybody. Then if it is more than $2 million, between $2 million and $5 million, they have to go to where they call DESCOM, headed by the group executive director, which is the group vice president. When it is more than the $5 million approval, it now goes to the NFPC management board uh, committee. They will look at it from $5 million to $10 million. When it is more than that $10 million, it goes to the NFPC board. That was how NFPC is structured. But today... One man wants to stay in his office to see even $1,000. So as a chief executive, it's like you are now a rubber stamp person. You don't, yeah, you don't get any, do anything until one man tells you it must be like this. That was not the culture of an NPC. And that was why an NPC was doing farewell, because everybody was given a responsibility and they carry the responsibility, they carry out their job according to their responsibilities. But when everything now goes to one man, leaving the procedure, leaving the protocol to go to one man, the man may be very busy, may be out of the country until he comes. And that is why the referrals are not working. Why are they not working? It's funding. The funds are not released as appropriately as, as possible. The, the, the referral MDs go tap and down begging instead of releasing the fund to them appropriately. It's a major problem. The same thing is applicable to the oil and gas companies. And, and you gas think, you, you, you seem to be saying, sir, that had there been a different uh, GMD, for instance, um, it's possible that these challenges that you have identified might not have existed. That seems to be the thrust, the thrust of what you're saying. Now, Bellet Yari is the 19th GMD of an NPC. We have seen other GMDs how to operate. I am telling you, this is the process. This is how to operate in the NMPC. Melakiari came in and looked at taking NMPC as his personal asset and personal pro, uh, company. And that is why he's doing whatever he does. He does that without a blink of his eyes, and he can do and undo. Otherwise, how can a man appoint an expatriate for a company like MPDC, where all the assets of the country are, and where they can produce over 1 million barrels? How can a man hmm. be there? Shell would dictate. Over 25 has been locked down for how many years? Several years. And they want to reopen. And it's not open. And that's sweet crude of 45,000 uh, barrels per day. 
At this time that Nigeria is looking for money, at this time that we are crying for a uh, fund, at this time where our foreign exchange is depleted, our reserve is depleted, you lock down, you allow Shell to lock down a plant. Not only, there's just one. There are several words like that. We are not going to explore activities since Belekiari came. No more exploration, no more new wells. They are not even doing workover on the wells. How will they produce more? For, and to meet up our target. We have enough crude oil in this country that we can pass uh, OPEC quota and have enough for our local refineries. So that whatever okay. the local refineries are giving I, I, I them is like a dash. I, I hear you. And you are definitely, you are, you know, uh, speaking for uh, your own interest. Um, you, you were the partner spokesman of the Pan Niger Delta Forum and um, your interest is clear. But I, forgive me, I, I, I doubt that any one man uh, would have the power it, it, because you've made it appear as if whoever is in that seat can actually operate like a law unto themselves. I mean, he's not the only person in there is um, the immediate point that occurs to everybody. And um, whereas you are advocating that, uh, you know what, we want a South Southerner to be the chief honcho you see, of NMPC. That is one thing. Is, what you are saying is NMPC culture have changed with Belekiari. He promised before he came, he said, look, it's going to change everything. That was the first statement he made. He said it was going to change everything that in the country and in NMPC. And even the staff of NMPC today are shrinking and they are, they are all dying in silence because the policies are not the way it is. They are not run the way it, it was. Everything has changed, and changed for the detriment of Nigerians. If the policies are good for Nigerians, well, we will clap hands for you. But if their policies are affecting the country, you cannot see the cost of oil price. The cost of fuel price has affected the cost of food, cost of transportation. Everything you can talk about today in the national economy is affected. Fuel price that you, you bet at 145 Naira per litre is now over 1,000 Naira. It is not the okay. I'll tell business. you what, Chief. Uh, let, let, uh, the first caller has come in. Um, let, me, let me take the call. Um, is that, good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Okay. Can okay. you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. And good morning to the Chief. Yes. Good morning. Uncle Yori, with due respect to the Chief before you, I tend to disagree with uh, some of his arguments. For one, I do not, I agree that the NFPC TNT is non performing. It should be changed. Well, uh, that is not the subject of, of today. It should be changed. I'm even surprised that his, his appointment was renewed not long ago. If it is on the basis of performance, I don't think he deserves it. But be that as it may, I do not agree that somebody from the South South necessarily do better. Why am I saying so? Look at the NDDC. Sometimes, NDDC has always been manned by the son of the soil as the head. But that institution, if I stand to be corrected, remains one of the most corrupt institutions in our system. And the deliverance of uh, governance that is expected of that organization is nowhere to be found. The chief will agree with me on this. I'm from the South South. Most of the projects that NDPC have started from 15 years ago are still pending. They are not done, and the money is gone. So it is not that whoever is the head of the organization will, because he comes from that zone, that he will do better. There's no way one can win that argument. What we should the, the, the Minister of Petroleum, for example, is from the is a son of the soil uh, in the South South. What have we got from him? Look at what they are doing to Dangote uh, in, in his presence. Look at what the oil cartel is making of the opportunity for us to have cheap oil. We are not getting it, and we are not hearing from him. All we hear is fight between him and uh, the, the parasitas under him who should be controlling staff of such parasitas. I'm saying this because, as a common man, what we need 
is good governance from our leaders. I don't care where the person comes from. What I care is dividends of governance. Even the chief himself has alluded to it that they use both. All they need is cheap fuel. Whoever brings the cheap fuel for them to use is what matters, not where he comes from. Okay. This is my argument. Good morning. Thank you very much. And um, uh, there you go, Chief uh, Taraigbe. Uh, no problem. Yeah. I, I, I look at this argument. The, there's a difference between NDDC and an NPC. NDDC is a, 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 a corporation where people are appointed from outside. Whereas in an NPC, the promotion is within the NPC, who are career servants. They, they come through the career system. They have been trained by NMPC, they have the NMPC lifestyle, and they know how NMPC operate. In NMPC, we have the upstream, we have the downstream. These are, we have persons who have worked through both the upstream and downstream, and today they are there. The only funny thing is, because of the leadership of Kiani, today NMPC has over 200 management staff. Out of these 200 management staff, we have less than 20, about 18, from the Niger Delta. The Southeast have even less because of uh, bureaucracy uh, in the system. People, but, but people work in NMPC for 20, 30 years, graduate, they are not made managers. But under Melekiari, somebody can graduate from uh, the university, uh, do their youth service, and the next thing you see, the man is a manager. We, see, we saw all that in the NMPC happening today because they are not following the rules again. I remember when uh, Abbey, Abiy Suku was the group executive director of services. He said, put in a process how they will employ, how they will pro, uh, promote. Today, those are thrown overboard. Nobody listen to it. He said, uh, when you are there, you can do whatever you like. But what you are saying is, there are competent hands within the NMPC from the Niger Delta who have served the country well, who today can manage NMPC effectively well too. We are talking right. about oil. Where would, how will you get the oil? We are talking about oil theft. We want somebody who will understand our language, who can talk to us. And we'll see the person who will be happy. And then, Ninja Delta don't need Minister of State Petroleum. I don't see any reason why Mr. President should always be becoming the Minister of Petroleum. Ninja Delta prefer to be the GMD. It's like a wife in the house. Who, you, the man gives the wife, the wife money. She cooks the soup, and she shares the soup. And when she shares the soup, the man, the owner of the house, the, the master, do not know who I wish to give food to. That is what's happening between the Minister of State or the Minister of Petroleum and the GMD of an NPC. The GMD of an NPC is so powerful that he can do and undo. The way the process, the system has changed, Ask anybody who works in an NPC, they will tell you the system has changed. I know so many of the MD, MDs who grew the system the way he, he also came, right? He has not worked in the pure production upstream. He did not work also in, the, he only had the small strength in the NAPIMS. And from there, he moved to crude oil marketing. It was not deep down. He worked in the survey, he did uh, his service as a surveyor, as well as a geologist. But deep down, Production of the crude oil is different. We need people who are experts who will ensure that Nigerians will pass that their limit of 2.4 to at least we can produce up to 3 point something million barrel per day. Sell that to OPEC and sell the other one to our local refineries in Naira. That's what we need. I would need to call okay. over this. If, All right. If the Indeed. refineries are working, we will Indeed. not have what Sell the food <laughs> to them in Naira. So that they can also is, sell in Naira. There, there is no We will not quarrel. talk about uh, uh, import duty. We will not talk about uh, freight. We will not talk about charges. As you produce, you sell. The highest that will happen is, in the past, when you produce in water refinery, they use vessels to take it to Lagos, where they pump them to the federal sector. So if they are, they are producing now, that good thing produces, they can also use vessels to take it to Port Harcourt, take it to uh, Wari, and pump them Use the pump to work. The pipelines are dead. Other Belekian pipelines are not working. Okay. If the pipelines fact, are working, we will where, not have where you've got to, I, I was, I, I wanted to, you know, uh, sort of, you know, get your perspective because um, 
you know, refineries, uh, as you know, apart from the Dangote refinery, which everybody is now looking towards, and you had alluded to uh, some of the, you know, challenges that appear, um, maybe they're in the process of being sorted out, but you spoke, uh, the refineries, you know, the other refineries, uh, petrochemical and carbon black plants are not working. Uh, what, what's your idea about why we have this situation? Because it would have been a lovely, a lovelier party, wouldn't it, uh, if alongside the Dangote refineries, all the other uh, the refinery, all the other refineries were also able to, you know, add to the um, to the kitty, so to speak. So, what is the problem? Why do you think we have a situation the, 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 where the those are all maribound? The problem is the political will to make these things work. What are the refineries supposed to produce petroleum, yeah, low puff fuel oil, high puff fuel oil, also produce uh, PP and uh, uh, what is used by the element petrochemical? Then, can you not refine supposed to produce wax, the, the lubricants? So that you don't need to buy these things anymore. But when these plants are faulty, the spare part, to buy the spare parts and change, or to do the maintenance, has been the problem. Because the wind power is not there. They prefer to import this. Instead of repairing this, the carbon black will, will work one day, two months, it is, it is down. You need the spare parts. The manufacturers are still there. They are ready to sell the spare parts. They have agents in Nigeria who can bring the spare parts. The same applicable to the petrochemical plant. They are, they, they, they are in Nigeria, the companies are ready to give you spare parts, they are ready to come and rehabilitate it. But they will power to do it. Rather than doing that, they prefer to import if they can go to import petroleum. Diesel is coming because it was a coal fire that was producing diesel and that became a threat. Otherwise, they would prefer to be importing all these things so that they, they'll make their money. Otherwise, why on earth will we be the major producers of petroleum? And yet, we cannot refine our product. There are countries who don't have oil at all. They only buy the petroleum and refine it. Here, you will give excuse, oh, that, that is uh, smuggling. If there is smuggling, what is the immigration doing? What is cost of doing? So, the you, you make this the point, prices, chief. Uh, oh, chief. Chief, chief, chief. Yes. Uh, uh, you, you, you made this point that um, um, some of the, like these, the refineries that are not working, the petrochemical, the carbon black plants and all of that, um, you, you make the point, and you're not the first to make it, that there are forces that actually don't want all these things to work. Um, I think there were even some allusions to that kind of a notion uh, in relation to the uh, Dangote refinery which is the biggest uh, refinery in uh, West Africa, I believe. So there are those, it is thought, who don't want it to succeed. And part of that lack of success for this one, which I think is being sorted out now, um, is, uh, is also the ones that you're talking about now. That why, Because you've, you've implied that why all those other refineries are not working is that there are forces behind them not working um, because if everything were to suddenly begin to work, there are a whole bunch of people that would be out of an income. Uh, that's, that's the, to put it in a simplistic way, that's what you are... Of course, that's what you are right. saying. If the refinery is working, will we import refinery? Will we import petroleum? Will we import uh, diesel? Will we import uh, lubricants? Will we import wax? Will we import uh, PP? If they are working. But these cabals will not allow you to work. And even now, they are thinking of selling the refinery to themselves. But, but you, you, you said the political will. They did but that in the of, past. You spoke about the party. political will. I hear, I hear the and argument to, to, to that point. Work. Yes, they don't the want to work. They don't have the political will to work. That is why we are saying, if you bring the Niger Delta, who knows that this plant are within the Niger Delta? That this plant will create employment? That this plant, if they work, they will reduce the cost of living. These plants, when they work, a lot of things will come down and Nigerians will be happy. Because the Niger Delta is not the brunt. What we are feeling, what we are seeing in the Niger Delta, the type of environmental degradation that we face. And you will not be a daughter or a son of Niger Delta and allow these plants to die. 
you must make sure they work. At the same time, I suppose, employ our people. Uh, okay, I suppose, I suppose, Today, chief, the 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 is, chief, go through. chief, okay, chief, the yes, elephant sir. in the room, the elephant in the room, in terms of this conversation, would then be, so, you've just said that, if it were somebody from the South South, and Niger Delta, and things would not be so, who are these people, um, because we've been hearing this, and we talked that we hear that there is no political will. So, who are these um, power uh, elements um, that are responsible for there being a, a difficulty in terms of the political will to do that which you are saying is right? Who? We, we keep the on talking about they, they, they. Under they. The management under Melakiari is one of the major problems we have. They have compromised the economy of the, the safety or the welfare of Nigerians to their individual pocket. And therefore, well, for me, well, well, for me, well, thank uh, God that Chief, 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 that's a humongous, yes. that's a humongous allegation. And you know, if you're going to say anything like I that, I don't allegate. I'm that's saying a man has been there since 2016 yes. under his watch. We are. This is what we are saying under his watch. This is okay. happening under his watch. Under, he okay, shot down with the father that he was working, that he wanted to do yes. rehabilitation. Okay. Instead of rehabilitating it gradually, like the PP plant, carbon plant, black plant, these are things that have done. But the people who are benefiting from this situation, are, are they very much, these people that are benefiting, benefiting from this situation, uh, you know we have the concept of what? In, Niger, in, in Lagos at one time, no, Nigeria, the unknown soldier sort of a thing. Are these unknown beneficiaries as well? Look, we said subsidy, there are frauds, calm and subsidy. 2019 to now, the only importer of petroleum is NNPC. The seller of petroleum is NNPC. So who is taking the subsidy and what is the scam? NNPC today is indebted to billions of dollars. Yet, you import fuel, you are selling fuel at a very high price, at the same time, you are selling the crude oil and you are not remitted. Yet you are owing billions. Who are you owing billions? We, we cannot be weak. We need to see clearly. Nigerians are seeing clearly what is wrong. And we are saying this thing should not continue. This thing must stop. All right, I'm not chief. asking for appointment for myself. I'm not saying appoint me. But today, mm -hmm. they are not employing, and NPC employment is secretive. How many Niger oh. Deltans have been employed? They are, our people have been retired. Even people get meritorious service, meritorious award, you are entitled to promotion. If it is Niger Delta, no promotion. If it is satisfaction of the country, that's promotion. Things are not well. done rightly in the interest of the nation. Things are sectional. Under this administration, we've had a GMD in the past. We saw well, what happened when Oyibo was, was a GMD. Do we complain like this? How much was fuel? 20 dara, 30 dara per liter. When uh, no. uh, uh, Chief Anabs, Chief yes. Anabs, Sarah Igwe, well, we're going to have to leave it here. This is one of those very large subjects. And as you know, you've um, often contributed to this question in the past. You continue to do so. Um, you are the pioneer spokesman of PANDEV, the Pan Nigeria Delta, Pan Niger Delta, beg your pardon, Pan Niger Delta uh, Forum. And um, even as we speak, you are the national coordinator uh, of the South South Elders Forum. So these are issues that are very, very close to your heart. And um, I, I guess thank you for coming along to express your concerns. But, but, but let me just say one thing before I go, sir. B you, know, you know, because we've run out of Today, time. But if it's a short one, one okay, let me just hear it. I'll round up. Just okay. one minute. Today, our external reserve is coming down because we are importing petroleum product. Instead of us to sell our crude oil, also refine and sell to increase our uh, reserve, we are using the reserve to import petroleum. Nigerians are tired of it. That is why we need somebody to take over. And we thank God. Oh. Belekiari will be 60 by 8 of January. We want to see whether this government will not obey the public service rule and the Nigerian constitution by allowing him. Because 
All right. To both of Thank you very much. Compulsorily. Thank you very much. The rules are there, you know. So, as you said, it's in January next year. So, uh, but as I was saying, I want to thank you very much for coming along, airing, you know, your concerns uh, as you see it. And um, we, we were, you know, we, we were happy to take uh, on your views as well. Okay, thank you very much once again.